everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Canary Room. Uh, season five, episode four, I think, of the show today. So coming up, well, we've got all of the return of the favourite features today. We've got the Norwich Notebook. We've got the uh, Native Diaries. We've got, we'll check in on the fifes. We'll also have a look at pairs in focus. We'll see how those birds are getting on. Um, we've got uh, a to-do list today and we'll look at new colour corner as well so lots and lots of things packed into the show today i must just thank everybody who's donated to the channel i uh, really really appreciate all of the donations to the channel thank you um it helps me keep this going uh, the canary room is is not about uh, generating a profit it's about bringing our hobby to the screen and you know it helps cover part of the expenses that I incur putting the show together. Um, next up, uh, next time out on the Canary Room, uh, I think next time out, I've filmed it. Um, it's an over an hour in the company of the Zebra Finch maestro, Mr. Peter Harrison. It's been long awaited this. Um, Pete's changed, moved bedrooms, moved the birds. Uh, and it's been fantastic. It was an absolute joy to spend time with him. So that should be coming up either the next episode or one very quickly after. And we've got a couple of other on the roads planned too. So as always, everyone, I've left mine in the house. Grab yourself a cuppa, sit back and enjoy the show. Well, as with all bird rooms and the Canary Room is no different, progress has been made. So we've done our third deep clean um, and we will, before we set eggs, we'll clean again. Um, done our third deep clean and one of the things that we've done is we've replaced the cage fronts. Now I talked about this some time ago. Um, so uh, very, very kindly, uh, Tony Kale made me uh, some new cage fronts. So. I've replaced them all with punch bar fronts. Um, I've got a couple of the lower cages still to do, but they're empty at the moment, so there's no immediate rush on those. But the, the, the cages that have got the birds in, well, they've been replaced. And one of the, the, the reasons behind it, absolutely my fault, I'd used um, a, a pigeon salts uh, and I'd rusted the cage fronts. So. These, hopefully, uh, at least if I, if I do rust them, I can rub them back down and, and, and repaint them again. So these are great. They're a bit wider drawers, which is fabulous. Um, doors, rather. Um, that's fabulous, so that'll allow me to get in and, and get birds captured. Um, what I have done is started to move the birds around. So the Norwich cockbirds now are singled off. Uh, they're in double breeding cages. They're in their breeding cages. There's six Norwich cocks. A bit more on that later on. The fives you can see, perhaps just actually out of shot behind me. I've got six of the five cockbirds um, at the top here. They're singled off. So those birds at the top, those are what I think are my best birds uh, and the most important for the line and moving the line forward. So those six birds there, there's a selection of flighted and unflighted birds. So we've got three flighted birds. They're bred in uh, green ring birds. Um, and then we've got three unflighted birds. So the unflighted cocks here, there's a, a heavily variegated uh, buff, there's a heavily variegated yellow, and there's a clear buff. And then here behind me, I've got a variegated yellow cock, a heavily variegated buff cock, and a heavily variegated yellow cock on the end. And those birds really are the sort of, you know, the, 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 the pinnacle direction of the stud moving forward. Um, of course, what you have got within there is is fathers and sons. And um, so the uh, variegated yellow cock here is the father to the clear buff cock on the end. The heavily variegated yellow cock on the end is the father to the va uh, variegated buff here. And the variegate, heavily variegated buff cock is the father to the heavily variegated yellow cock there. So fathers and sons, and that really, you know, that's replicated throughout the canary room. What you might be able to hear is a bit more noise. Now, as soon as I say that, the room goes deadly quiet. Um, conditioning has continued. We're giving egg food twice a week now um, as we as we move the birds forward and we're giving a little bit of uh, conditioned seed with um, wheat germ oil in as well, just mainly just to the cockbirds. But the process of singling off has started. So 
what I've done as, as part of this latest clean is leave some of the cages sort of empty for now. And I will move the hens in. And so by probably by the time this episode goes out towards the end of February, the majority of the hens will be in their breeding cages. Very much with the birds here, very much about looking and keeping an eye on them and keeping an eye on their development. Um, what I've got here in, in the sort of flight cages, particularly here with the green buff hens, uh, I saw a number of birds actually scratching out in the egg food drawer, so they were looking to, to sort of go to nest and, and, and get to nest. So what I've done, um, I've singled them off. Uh, so I put a couple of pans in um, and I've got, see a little bit of nest building activity. I've seen a little bit of mating going on. Uh, so hopefully if, if and when they do lay, those eggs will be full. Um, but it is very much a steady process. You know, wh what I'm not gonna do is single off all the birds at the same time. So what I am doing is I'm looking at the individual birds and I'm looking at those birds that seem to be demonstrating a more advanced breeding condition and those are the birds that I'm singling off. So it's not a big bang by any stretch of the imagination. It's very much a methodical process of looking at the birds. And you know, one of the things I'll do, I'll pop a little bit of uh, nesting material through. I'll see which birds are, are picking that up, rolling it to the back of the beak. Uh, and I'm looking for those telltale signs that the birds are active and they're ready to or getting close to be ready to breed so that's um i think for 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 us with the fifes that's a solid you know a solid start no eggs as yet don't expect any i was looking at my diary last year i think my first egg was the 4th of march so some time away yet till we get to that sort of date um may get a little bit earlier this year with the eggs don't know don't know one of the other things which um which i have done is i'm i'm obviously and i've explained in previous episodes i'm running a number of pairs this year i've got the quality and you know time commitments mean that the pairs will 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 sort of help me what i've done where i'm running pairs though is i've put a wire uh, a divider between them so where i've got a trio of birds i've got a solid divider and that's so the the, the male bird the cock bird can't pair bond with either of the hens i don't want him to choose i want to choose and i want him to run with both um where I've got the uh, the pairs, um, and, and again, when I was thinking about the configuration of the room where I was putting birds, you know, I've got some really nice clear buff hens, so I want them on this wall, and some of the clear yellow hens will go on the other wall. They're as nice, but I think the clear buff hens are just a little bit better. So what I've done is I've put a wire divider through, and the rationale behind that is that, you know, when I move the hens in, to start with, the, their partners can see them, they can call to them, but they can't get them. So those cockbirds will continue that process of driving the hens on. So that's very much the thought process with the wire dividers this year and the difference between the, the cages and, and the solid dividers. As you can see at the moment, the vast majority of the, the fives are still in breeding uh, flight cages and, and they'll remain there for... Um, you know, over the next couple of weeks. As I said, what I'll start to do, I'll start to look at those that are demonstrating better breeding condition. And as I see them, then I'll look to move them. I imagine by the beginning of March, everything fife-wise will be singled off. Different story with the other varieties of canaries in the room. More of that later. Let's catch up now with the Native Diaries. So similar process really with the with the native birds. One of the things which has been really interesting with the natives, and I'm not expecting them to come into breeding condition until you know early early April or late April, really early May. Although they do, and they're obviously they're conditioned in a similar way to the canaries. They do seem to be a little bit more advanced. I've seen a couple of the bullfinch hens picking up. Um, and I've just seen them twirling long pieces of um, of the uh, the bedding in their beaks. So interesting to see that. I think I'm not putting any nest sites in now, and and certainly won't. And um, 
The the Siskins have been an absolute disaster. Uh, so Siskins this year, um, I, I lost a, a hen, and as a consequence of that, we've only got two male Siskins. So um, Siskins have been a disaster. I may or may not decide to do some mewling with them. I'm not certain yet. Um, I, I, I really... I really, really don't know. Goldies, I'm still waiting to bring um, a, a Goldie cock in to go with what I think I've got, two Goldie hens. Um, they're looking at them, though. They, they seem to be, you know, moving forward in advancement. We know with the goldfinches that, you know, one of the tail tail signs of conditioning is the beak. Um, and, you know, the beaks have sort of black on them. And as I look at the beaks, they've still got black on them, but their beaks seem to be lightening up. And that'll be an indicator of um, of time. Idea with the Goldies is going to be run them in in the, the outdoor flight. And at the moment, you can tell I've got a jacket on. At the moment, it's blowing an absolute hoolie outside. So I certainly wouldn't be putting them out now. Um, we'll look at uh, the red poles. We'll look at one of the pairs of poles, actually, as a pair in focus this year. Um, so we know we're going to look at the bullfinches as well. They're in good form. That said, one of the challenges I've got with one of the bullfinch uh, cockbirds and it's it's a couple of years old this bird it seems to be gaping um, now I've, I've I've ran a treatment through it and and it kind of picks up and then seems to go down again and and that's not great so, you know I, I, I'd originally planned to run four pairs of bullfinches and then that became three pairs of bullfinches and at the moment I've got three 2021 hens and 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 three cockbirds to go with them and um, I have got a spare Norwich cockbird. Uh, it's a buff, though, not a yellow. Um, don't know yet. I mean, hopefully this this guy will pull through and, and breed. Hopefully, uh, we'll we'll see with that. Um, linnets, li linnets are a really lovely bird. Really, really lovely bird. And they're um, you know they seem in good condition. Um, feeding they're not really that interested in the egg food which is uh, which is interesting there's no live foods coming in here at the moment but i will start to introduce those um, probably around uh, early march time and, and and do that as part of the conditioning for the uh, the native finches so you know very much like the rest of the birds in the room very much a conditioning period although i don't expect these birds to be further advanced so let's have a look while we're here in this corner let's have a look at Pairs in focus this time around. So we talked about the pairs in focus. <clears throat> we talked about it on uh, a couple of the shows now. We are going to follow, for those of you new to the channel, we're going to follow a selected number of the birds in the canary room. We're going to follow them throughout the season. So last time round, we talked about the bullfinches that we were going to follow. And this time round, I think we'll have a little look at some of the red poles that we're going to follow. Now, the pair we're going to look at is the pair directly behind me here. Um, it's a, a, a pied cock bird, which I bred last year, and a, a, a split pied hen. Um, now, the... The hen is, is normal, so she's visually normal, but she's split for pied. So these birds, the, the cock bird, potentially split for cinnamon, uh, certainly split for silver. Um, so there is a possibility of a real nice sort of mix, assuming these birds breed, fingers crossed, um, in their young this year. So uh, a really nice, you know, a nice pair. And I think... Um, Thinking about the, the sort of the different mutations of the, the native finches, you know, often one of the challenges you have in, 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 in mutation birds is that you don't get the same quality. Uh, the normals are generally a dominant quality, and, and that's certainly the case in my room. You know, these are nice birds, and they're really well bred from some of the top fanciers of red poles in the, in the UK. Um, and they've got the, the hen particularly, it's got a nice colour on it, it's got nice markings down the side. Um, it's gonna it's gonna throw pied birds. Uh, and you know, I really, I really, really like the pied red pole. I really like the normal red pole as well. So that's our pairs in focus for this week. Let's see how they get on in this season, hey. I'm sure it'll be like the red pole diaries again. Plenty of heartache. Of course, this time of uh, the season, uh, heading towards the end of February, it's uh, time now for the to-do list.
Our to-do list this time round, well, you know, we looked last time at the things we needed to remember and this time we need to remember more things as well. So really towards the end of the month, it's about um, trimming the birds. So towards the end of, uh, of February, we'll trim the Norwich canaries, the heavily feathered birds. We won't do that with the fights. Um, the heavily feathered birds. We'll hand over to a video we premiered last year to Keith and his Norwich. We'll let Keith show you with a film by Margaret and, and I think Margaret Scissors as well, to be fair. But we'll have a quick look now at what Keith does to trim the birds, just as a little refresher. When you see the, all the feathers like that, the heavy feathers, so you need to cut round the bench without accidentally cutting their leg off. So you keep the both legs under your thumb and finger, your forefinger, cut round the vent, leaving the feel of feathers around the vent. You can, if you think the feel of feathers are extra long, you can trim them down as well. I also cut a little bit off the tail. Then I check to see if the claws won't cut in. If they won't cut in, cut them just in front of the vein, like that. And also, if you're expecting your ends to rear, there's a lot of feather around the eyes, cut the feathers around the eyes. So they can see. Okay, and that's how the bird should look. You do that the same with the cocks. Okay, and also I also trim a little bit off the end of the tail on the cocks because some of the ends pull the cock tail. As always, indebted to Keith and Margaret for Margaret for her video skills and, and Keith for for sharing his knowledge. So we will be trimming the Norwich at the end of the month. We want to get them ready for the breeding season. The trimming process will knock them back a little bit. Uh, so it will knock them out of condition a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, they'll be where I want them to be. Of course, we will give another treatment before we put the final birds in. We'll give them another uh, anti-mite treatment before we put them in their stock cages. And the other thing that we need to do this time of year is get the nest pans ready. Um, certainly towards the end of February, we're getting the canary nest pans ready. We'll want to get them in situ. And if we've got a little quiet time every now and again, we will uh, we'll put the... Um, the native finches nest pans together as well so different nests for the different birds and um, you know in the bullfinches i'll hang nests inside the cages for the other birds they'll they'll have nest sites on the outside of the cages and we'll see how that goes so our february to-do list the second part of our february to-do list we're trimming birds we're trimming nails we're making sure the birds have had their final anti-mite treatment uh, before the breeding season. And, uh, and we're keeping everything crossed. Let's have a look now with the Norwich Notebook. So I really, really, really enjoyed going to the All British and seeing, uh, obviously meeting up with Keith and um, seeing him and, and seeing all the Norwich there, the champion Norwich on display from, from all over the UK and, 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 and really, really delighted, you know, when I came home and, and thought, well, you know, if I look at the blood that's in my shed, the pedigree that's in my shed, my whites are from the, uh, the, the Jones and Roberts partnerships and what an absolutely diamond couple of blokes they are. Couldn't do enough for you. Um, really, really, really thoroughly decent bird men. Uh, and I'm you know, indebted to them for the quality of the bird that they've let me have, um, but also for their real, their real interest. Um, so cheers, chaps. I really appreciate that. Um, I got the two whites. There's a variegated and there's a, a, a sort of, she is variegated as well, but the, the variegation is right behind the legs. So she looks visually white. I say she, they're both she's. Uh, I had them DNA sexed. I used Avigenics. So I used Avigenics in the UK for the first time. Um, fab, fabulous service. Absolutely fabulous service. Um, had, you know, results back within a matter of days uh, sent to me via WhatsApp and sent to me over email. So thank you very much indeed for that. Um, two white hens, so that's a joy. Um, so that's sort of 
slightly change the plans, just slightly, only slightly change the plans for this year. Um, but it has changed the plans. Um, and then I went to see my good friend Keith. Uh, I was picking up some egg food from Shane. Um, I was working down south, so I, I arranged to meet up with Shane and um, picked up some egg, egg food from him. And on the way back, called in and dropped some egg food off with Keith and called in to see Keith and Margaret and uh, have a little look at Keith's birds. And they were looking in, you know, stunning condition and interested to see his preparations. And was delighted to come away with another addition. Um, so uh, a, a buff cock here that we've got, which is um, feather on this bird's incredible. Um, absolutely incredible. Not the biggest of Norwich, but a really nice style to it. And actually what's interesting is if you look at this bird, it's the uh, the son of the, uh, the bird that we use in the intro to the Canary Room. So we filmed that its father a couple of years ago now and, and we've got his son in the room. So with the Norwich Notebook, I've got three banks of doubles here. So there's six cages. I'm going to run six straight pairs of Norwich. I will have um, an, a, a spare buff cock. And as I mentioned earlier, that might go with um, the uh, bullfinch hen. It might not. We'll see. Um, I might, if it doesn't go with the bullfinch hen, I might put it over a, a, a fife hen or maybe one of the new colours to try and breed some Norwich mongrels really as, as feeders. Not sure about that yet, but I certainly won't let them go to waste. Um, so I've got four buff cocks in here. Um, the, the two spares really are two buffs, so I wouldn't put them together. Uh, so there's a, a, a buff hen and there's a, another buff cock there. So the buff hen, really nice buff hen this and, and really tight feather. So I've got a couple of yellow cocks here. Uh, and I may run one of them as, as a trio over them yet. We'll see. We'll see how the season goes. The season develops with that. Um, if not, then again, ideally, you'd want a yellow feathered bird. It isn't a yellow feathered bird I've got, so I, it doesn't matter what the ideal is. Uh, I might run a siskin um, over the Norwich and try and breed some uh, nice siskin mules. We'll see. We'll see. Lots of things to think about. And that's the beauty of bird keeping, isn't it? You know, we, we make plans and then things happen and then we change our plans and then we make more plans and things happen and we change them again. And it, it becomes a cycle of changing plans, but that's OK. So when I look at um, the Norwich, you can, you can actually possibly hear one of the Norwich cockbirds in, in full voice behind me. They've got a real deep belting voice. I love it. Absolutely love them. They seem in really, really good condition. So um, what I'm not going to do this year is the same thing I did last year, which is try and drive them on and, and get them down too early. So the hens will stay in the flight cages for another couple of weeks, and I'll probably move them over early in March time, early mid-March. And hopefully at that point, the cocks will have uh, you know recovered from their little trim, and they will be absolutely bouncing fit. So finally today, it's the uh, New Colour Corner, our first visit to the New Colour Corner this year. Um, so let's have a quick check in with the Grey Wings. Grey Wings are really smitten with them, really, really smitten. I've got three pairs this year. Um, uh, I've got three pairs from the birds that I, I bred last year. Intention with the grey wings is to, to breed and show them in their own right. So, you know, I've got a nice quality of bird there. I want to retain that nice quality of bird. But what I also want them to do is give me a hand rearing the Norwich young. So, you know, very much like many Norwich breeders, look at me, I'm a Norwich breeder. Uh, very much like many Norwich breeders, I will foster the majority of the eggs. I will let the Norwich sit uh, and I'll try them with some feeder eggs because, you know, I don't want to breed that instinct to rear their own out of them. But I will move the eggs through to some of the, uh, the grey wing birds. Last year, they... They did great for me, fingers crossed, touch wood, everything else. They do the same for me. But they're here on their own right. And that's why when I mentioned earlier about, you know, breeding some Norwich feeders, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether I want that in the room. Keith's Norwich feeders uh, that he's he's developed with, with uh, some help from Paul Martin are absolutely stunning birds. They are visually very, very attractive. And, you know, they're obviously doing a really good job for him. So undecided. Never say never in this game, but... 
our new colours this year. We'll keep an eye on them uh, and we'll see what we manage to breed from them. But uh, really, you know, visually a bird I am very, very fond of. Well, that's all we've got time for today. I hope your breeding season, wherever you are in the world, is going okay. If you're in the breeding season, I know our friends down under, uh, they've just got their birds through the molt. They breed different times of the year from us. So hopefully you still enjoy the show and you still enjoy the highs and lows of what's going on in the canary room. If you um, like what you see, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. We produce the Canary Room. It comes out every other Sunday at 9 a.m. Follow us on Facebook. You'll see all kinds of things going on Facebook as well and promos for the show. We will be in the company of Peter Harrison. We filmed that. It'll be one of our next episodes out. Until next time, everyone, take care.